karma and how one's choices changes the karmic consequences, their fate. The law of karma and how one's choices changes the karma conse consequences, their fate. Yes. The law of karma centers around these three points. Reaction, reflection, resound, as Baba puts it. If I put my hand in the fire, it is sure to be burned. Therefore, for action, there is equal and opposite reaction. That is the law of karma. Therefore, one's choices, if you go on changing your choices, your results also will not go as per your choice. It will go as per the law, law of karma. If you stand in the rain, you will get drenched. Why? It is the law of, law of karma. You are standing in the rain, therefore you are going to be drenched. Therefore, you have got choice. Karma meaning action. But karma fala, the result, is not in your hands. It goes by law. I have got equal independence to kill somebody. Very good. You murder. Then result is imprisonment. Or you may be hanged also. Therefore, results are not in your hands. Actions are left to you. Be prepared. Because you cannot escape from karmic consequences. Thank you. Then another question. The collective responsibility. So many other things. Opposing Swami's teachings. Very good. Consequences. Choosing money over God. Following their friends, yes. So many th things have been mentioned here. Not following conscience. Uh, and then following friends, very good. And then, Purnavatar as being no longer valid after his passing. These are the very, very childish questions, I think. They are not the questions born out of maturity, I am sure. They are not the questions based on experience. They are not the questions um, built on prolonged period of stay in Prashantanilayam. This is just guesswork. This is only a mind game. Let me just cut the question into bits and answer your question. Following their friends, one part of the question. Never follow your friends. As Swami puts it, so long you have got money in your pocket, father is in your in position, everyone will say hello, hello. When father retires, when pocket is empty, nobody will say bye bye even. Nobody will say that's what Baba said. I'm quoting him exactly. I translated his talks. Therefore, if you go by friends, you are sure to be in trouble. Don't allow yourself to be carried away by your friends. Follow your conscience. Follow your conscience. Pray to Swami. He will give you proper direction. And then, <coughs> Purnavatar as being no, no longer valid is other point raised here in the question. The word Purna means what? Full. Complete. When that completeness cannot be made incomplete. Purna means full. Purna avatar. Fullness. How do you break it? How can it be fragmented? Can you divide the sky? Can you divide the ocean? They are full. That's why it is said in the scripture. Purna mother, Purna vidam. That's what Swami said in his discourses. That is full, this is full. Everything is full. But if I have that fragmental approach, that segmental approach, that approach of division into bits, I cannot understand the divinity. Divinity is oneness. Full. Purnamada, Purnamidam. Therefore, when Baba says you are full, 
how can be how can he be incomplete how can he be half full when you are total why can't he be total totality is divinity totality is divinity partiality is humanity so it is humanity that divides into parts parts partiality whereas unity is divinity the totality is divinity so there is no question of no longer valid it is not like any medicine to give you expiry date bhagavad gita does not say expiry date it is no longer valid after that no no book says that so it is only our weakness that's why baba said mind is a mad monkey this mad monkey doubts everything it doubts all scriptures it doubts even baba it doubts even baba's teachings it questions baba's divinity it hesitates to follow baba's path it's all game of the monkey mind baba said long back therefore let us not allow this monkey mind act whimsically act in a funny way and allow it to take us away from the spiritual path thank you what swami said about collection of funds uh, versus the completely opposite tactics tactics of that place oh, oh. let me not mention that place at this place swami is dead against dead against collection of funds please take it from me my friend let me tell you well we, we usually sit for darshan right every darshan we watch swami sometimes he throws back some envelopes given to him he accepts letters envelopes like anything but he throws back some envelopes some covers he throws back you know what they are containing currency containing money containing checks he throw his back that saw he cares to tuppence there's no place for money god and mammon cannot go together he will not touch will you believe me if i say there's no bank account in the name of bhagwan sri sat sai baba do you believe that yes nothing no bank account on his name everything is on the name of such a sai central trust only not on his personal name so he is nothing to do with his funds as a simple instance there is one uh, sadhu parishad meeting held here in prashant lane akhila and sadhu parishad swami gave him lot of money for organizing that meeting it was attended by so many sadhus so many swami ji so many people from all over andhra pradesh that day i happened to be there in Sw- in swami's company the leader by name swami bhumananda from kalyanadurga of anandpur district he came to swami with accounts swami you have given so much money swami these are the accounts i am returning this money swami did not look at it and told him bhumananda do you think swami will get go into your accounts you should be truthful to yourself you should be honest to yourself i don't look into the accounts like that do you want to give me back the balance do you think i would receive no spend for your organization spend for the poor people i don't care for this money i can give numbers examples my friend the swami refused funds why vijayanagaram district maharaja's own number of institutions mansas institutions mansas institutions vijayanagaram when they all came there swami we offer these institutions to you he said i don't want i don't want you marry yourself i don't want it 
Swami is not here to take over all the institutions. It's not like that. So he's dead against collection of funds. Thank you. The question is this. Is there any rule in such a Sai international organization that declares that if any center member starts following another teacher, they are no longer allowed to participate in the center. In other words, if you are in the center, follow some other guru, the organization objects. Now, the question is, is there any rule? <coughs> there need not be any rule. Your conscience will tell you. Following Jesus Christ Christians, they don't follow Krishna. You cannot say, is there any rule in Christianity that you should not worship Krishna? When you stop worshipping Christ, you don't go to Krishna naturally, all by yourself. There need not be rule. I am devotee of Baba. Is there any rule that says I should not go anywhere? Rule is not necessary. When I love him, when I am an ardent devotee, when I follow his message thoroughly, when I enjoy myself, when I am in blissful state, when I think of him, there need not be any rule, rule forbidding me. There need not be any rule to encourage me to go anywhere. Rule. Conscience will tell you the rule, not the organization. Conscience is above the organization because conscience is divine. Then, other part of the question, why has not this rule been enforced at all in any country by the leaders of Sri Satsai International Organization and heads of each country's Sai organization? I tell you, let us not go into enforcement. Let us not go into forceful implementation. As I said earlier, whether a leader or a follower, whether a member or an organization, organizer, when you follow Swami, he himself will not go anywhere. This question of going anywhere is something like jump, ready to jump to the other side of the fence anytime. It is not, spirituality is not a political game. You cannot jump like that. And further, the organization, as far as I know, clearly says, organizers cannot take up responsibility in any other spiritual organization very clearly mentioned. You don't expect any Maulvi to get into the temple. You don't expect any Christian pastor to get into the temple. You don't expect any Pujari to go to the church. You don't get any, expect any priest to go to the mosque, do you? You don't. So, is there any rule? A rule need not be there. You are affiliated to this. And you have committed to this. So you yourself won't go. And the question is, if the leaders don't follow this, the members have got equal right to take up the matter in your meeting, in your meeting of the organizers. We do have meetings, yes. Every Sai Center We'll have executive body meeting once in three months or once in two months, as the case may be. When the members meet, they can question, why do you do that? Why not? We don't question, why? Because of our timidity, our cowardice, our limitation. Come on, in a meeting of the members, we can ask them, oh, being the leader, how do you go there? What kind of an example you give to us? Why do you do that? And then go to higher authority of the regional coordinator and then go to the national authority, complain with proof, not by hearsay or anything like that. Therefore, organization 
you can easily question the conduct of the leaders in particular when members meet. Yes, it is a purely an organizational issue, but not anything to do with spiritual concern. Thank you. Then, don't leaders feel any prick of conscience that they are not following the guidelines set up by Bhagwan himself? <laughs> don't the leaders feel any prick of conscience? There is a phrase in English, thick-skinned, thick-skinned people. So the conscience won't prick. When they are thick-skinned, who can tell them? And in fact, they should feel ashamed of themselves, ashamed of themselves for not following the rules of the organization, for not following the teachings of Bhagavan. The best thing would be to step down, to resign and be amongst other devotees, be amongst other members. As a leader, you cannot do like that. You cannot set a bad example. No. It is because of utter ignorance they may be doing it. That is a questionable thing in any platform, at any place. Thank you. How can devotees remove these leaders who are silently contributing to the success of Mudanahari by their silence in action and inaction? Silence and inaction are the two weaknesses of the members. I don't blame the leaders. When you are wrong, I should say you are wrong. Why don't you say that? Without telling, how does he come to know that he is wrong? How does he come to know that there are people to question him? How does he come to know that he may be removed any time from that post of office because he is acting against the code of conduct? against the rules of organization. He should be, uh, be appraised. He should be well informed of the rules or else we should remind him. Because Sai Chatter for the organization is not a, a confidential document. Anybody can get it. Basing on that charter, you can ask that. This is the rule. Why are you like that? Come on. Because you got the chart available to you. Basing on those rules, you can raise a question. And they are silent. Why? Because nobody question, question them. They are men of inaction because nobody will point out. So the leaders are like that because followers are helpless. Followers are equally silent and inaction. When I question your silence, I cannot be silent. In questioning, my silent is, silence is gone. When I say, you are a man of inaction, well, I cannot be a man of inaction. So devotees must be of action, must be of expression, so that leaders cannot maintain that silence and inaction any longer. Thank you.